This morning, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 28, but before we get there, uh, I want to kind of share a little bit of just celebration of what God did with us this past year. Uh, last, this last year, uh, God has just done so many awesome things, and you've been part of that. And, and I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been a part of the various opportunities and ministries and missions that we've been involved in. You know, we started out last year with a team heading to Haiti. Some of you, who was on that, some, if you were on that team, I know a few people here uh, were on that team, yeah. Uh, went to Haiti, uh, sweltered in the sun. It was hot there. How hot was it, James? Upper 90s. Upper 90s, yes. Yeah, so, uh, upper 90s, and you guys were doing some stuff in the attics, right? You were up in the, in the attics and up on roofs doing solar installations and stuff. And, and so we, we had a team that went down to Haiti and uh, installed uh, solar equipment at the Orlip Center in May. In June, our Guatemala team uh, hosted the uh, garage sale, and we have that coming up again here next month. And so uh, be preparing to bring in your stuff for uh, the garage sale. That, the garage sale this year is going to sponsor our youth mission trip into the city of Buffalo. And so we're not going overseas, but, but if you drive through Buffalo, man, you see people who are in need. You see uh, organizations that are helping. And what our youth are going to be doing is they're going to be traveling to Buffalo. They're going to be staying in the city. They're not going to be coming back home. It's not like a day trip. It's like you stay in the city at a hotel up in Buffalo. And they are going to be uh, joining up with ministries that are engaged with various needs in the city. And so like 716 Ministries and City Mission and these type of ministries, they're going to be engaging with them and working with them to meet needs right here in our local area in the city of Buffalo. And so come and support the garage sale with either your donations or uh, coming to purchase things. Uh, in July, we had VBS last year. We are preparing for VBS again this year. Anna does such a powerful job and such a wonderful job leading that ministry. We had 19 children last July uh, make a commitment for Jesus Christ. Let me say that one more time because I don't think you really understood what I said. We had 19 people last July, 19 children, make a commitment for Jesus Christ. I'm glad you got it that time. You know, if we can't celebrate people coming to faith, I'm just going to pack up and go home. Because honestly, that's what it's all about, church. That's what it's all about. And, and, and we, need, we need to catch that enthusiasm. Uh, in August, we had 19 people go to Guatemala. And we also had our uh, baptism service in, in August, and we had seven people uh, come and be baptized. And one of those individuals ex received Jesus that very day and then was baptized. It was just a, a powerful service. I'll never forget that service. That was a, an awesome time. So many of you were part of that. Thank you so much for your, your service and your prayers. And, and so many of you were preparing uh, and, and helping uh, administer that service. And so thank you for that. In, in September, we opened up our newly remodeled youth area down in the basement. If you've not been down to see the new youth uh, room, I would encourage you to take a, take a trip down there. It, it, I, will, I will say this, you may get a little uh, faint odor. We had some issues with one of the uh, toilets down there this last weekend that the Friday crew fixed on Friday, but uh, uh, we, uh, we have a beautiful facility down there. So many of you helped out with that. In, in, in October, we celebrated 125 years of ministry. Uh, we had a wonderful time, a wonderful celebration, uh, just a lot of great fellowship, an opportunity to be together and to reflect on what God has done. And we had people who uh, made recommitments to faith and, and people who made first-time commitments to faith that day with Bay Forest here. And, and God was moving. And in December, we launched Elijah in Resurgent City. We released uh, Elijah into full-time church planting ministry up in the city of Buffalo with Resurgent City. And that, that had you know, it was kind of a, a slow release for us because we celebrated and committed at the 125th in October and then released him full-time into that ministry in December. In February, we moved to a single service with a dedicated Sunday school hour, and it's been great to see how God's been moving in that uh, particular opportunity and a lot of people uh, stepping forward and, and uh, spending time fellowshipping and studying God's word together in and, and adult Sunday school and, and the uh, increased opportunity that that's created for us to fellowship here on Sunday mornings. It was, it was awesome. Last week, 
You know, it was like 30 minutes after service or 40 minutes after service. We had a couple of the grandkids with us, and uh, Karen had already gone to the car with the kids, which is my signal to, like, wrap it up, right? Like, when you're married after a while, Brandon, you'll get these signals. You, she won't, Abby won't have to say anything. You just know, maybe, you know, it's wise for you to learn those signals. Uh, so I had the, the nonverbal signal, and uh, there were still, like, 30 or 40 of you here visiting, so I just, like, looked at Mike Bentley. I said, uh, somebody make sure the lights are off. I'm leaving. And I don't know how long people were here visiting, but I just love that. I was blessed by that, that, that you are living into each other's lives with the grace and the love of Christ and, and you're loving on one another and you're praying with each other. You know, how many, how many Sundays after church do I go out and there's somebody that, that's praying with somebody because they've shared a need and they're like, I'm, you don't just say, I'm gonna pray for you. You say, let's pray right now. Right? And, and you pray with that person then, right then and there, and then you pray for them later too. But, but you're, you're administering God's grace. You're administering God's love. You, you're on mission for God, even here on Sunday morning as we love into each other's lives and live into each other's lives with the love of Christ. And then we just celebrated our mission conference here earlier in May, and what a, what a beautiful thing that was. And, and uh, Pastor Luis was sharing with me how blessed he was for the, the people who came up and supported children, and, and Wayne had a great response with child sponsorship, and, and our heart for, for people around the world and for these children to know God's love and to be uh, trained up in, in godly places and to have the word of God spoken into their lives and for them to receive adequate care and, and education and resources to be able to have a chance to, to move ahead in life. You care about that and you're on mission for God and what a wonderful thing that is. You know, our mission statement is what? I'll say it with you in case you forget. If, if we click the next slide, I think it's on there so you can read it. Uh, ordinary people seeking and sharing extraordinary life in Christ. Like that's what we're called to do, right? That, that's, that's how we have uh, distilled what God is doing in our midst. And we're, we recognize, you know, we're, we're normal people. We are ordinary people and we are reaching, we are seeking and we are sharing, right? We're seeking and sharing that extraordinary life in Christ. And it is extraordinary, like, if you have a relationship with Jesus, it is the best thing out there. If you have that, you know that. You know just how much God blesses you day in and day out. And you, I hope you never get over that feeling of being blessed and being loved on and just reveling in God's goodness. I never, never lose that. Hold on to that. Hold on to that energy, that passion. And so many of you are helping us to do that. And, and I want to say thank you. Thank you to all of our volunteers, uh, from people who are uh, volunteering up here on stage on Sunday mornings, uh, leading us in worship, people at the doors, people behind the scenes that you don't even see uh, on Sunday morning, but there are people back in the nursery and, and in the toddler room and working with kids. And uh, we don't see them on Sunday morning unless you have kids in those places, but they are serving, they are loving, they are sharing the extraordinary life of Christ with people. Thank you for that. And this morning we're going to take just a few minutes to say thank you to, to one particular individual and in, in, uh, in Ron Sheldon. And Ron has uh, been serving here for eight years as our uh, head of maintenance and, and properties and Ron has done just a fantastic job creating a, a group of guys that come in and, and work on Fridays with our Friday crew. And, and Ron was here, I think, every day this winter shoveling snow. Like, it was a tough winter, wasn't it? It was a tough winter. And I would get here in the morning, and oftentimes I get here like 8.30, sometimes 8 o'clock, uh, sometimes 10 o'clock, but uh, oftentimes it's 8.30 around in there. And Ron would already have been here and cleared the sidewalks and got uh, things. He'd be out spreading salt and things like this. And I think he was here just about every day this year doing that to make sure that the building was safe for people to come in to do ministry in. And uh, Ron's going to be stepping back uh, from that side of his uh, job. He's going to be still hanging out with Friday crew and still giving us uh, some light maintenance stuff throughout the week. Uh, but he's going to be stepping back from the snow removal stuff. And so we wanted to honor him and just say thank you for his service in a special way. We've got cake afterwards. Please eat that cake. Man, that thing weighed 20 pounds. So everybody gets at least a couple ounces of cake today. And uh, we're just saying thank you to Ron for his service. And so Ron, if you'd come down, we just want to express our appreciation to you this morning. 
and, and to uh, say thank you for your service, and, and we're glad that you're continuing to serve, and we look forward to what God, I know he's uh, releasing you to spend more time with your family, and uh, there's no money in there, no. Well, he took most of my thunder out of my talk, but I just wanted to say it has been a privilege and an honor, and I want to thank in particular all the volunteers for some of the large, major projects. Uh, I tell people, when you're moving 14-foot sheets at 5 inches drywall, you know you've got some people really helping you out. If I could, could I have all the Friday crew guys stand up, please? On Friday crew, could you stand up? They might not have heard you. They've all got earpieces in, so I'll, I'll, I'll repeat what Ron says so you can hear it. I always do this piece at our Christmas party. It says, I'm not yelling at you. I just want you to be able to hear me. But I'll have to tell you, if it wasn't for these gentlemen that come every Friday and mow the yards and do the major projects, uh, this church would probably be something like the uh, building down the street that you just tore down. Um, but the other thing is, is, and you all recognize, is, of course, this is a part-time job, and it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun, and there's another person I have to recognize because she's my cohort, and if it wasn't for her, you would not have clean carpets, clean floors, there would be overflowing garbage cans, and there wouldn't be toilet paper in any one of the toilets in the entire <laughs> Beth Campbell. Same conclusion, because he told me to keep it short. <laughs> If you've never volunteered here, and I know a lot of you volunteer in a lot of different ways, you will find a very special place in your heart to find that these people are exceptional people. I mean, my Friday crew, I feel like they're my father, and probably the other hardest working person in this place is this man right here. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. There are so many of you that uh, I would love to do just what we did with Ron and bring you up front and say thank you. And we don't have time to do that with everybody this morning. Uh, you know, people like Jim Agro, who leads our worship team and puts in countless hours, and Anna, who leads our choir, and uh, so many of, uh, of our youth sponsors who are here week after week investing into our, our youth and our volunteers. We have uh, couples that take a month at a time and, and lead our children's service. They're teaching right now. Uh, in our children's ministry, uh, equipping our youngest kids with the word of God and putting God's word into their hearts so they would know Christ and, and grow in relationship with him. Our, our staff, you know, uh, Kelly and Janet in the office who do so much and uh, oftentimes last minute because I get a, an idea on Friday and I'm like, Janet, can we do this for Sunday? And she's like, I already had my day planned out, but she makes it happen anyways. And they put up with me and uh, my shenanigans. And then there's Jason, uh, that we all put up with. Uh, no, Jason is a great, uh, I'm just picking on you, man. Uh, Jason's a great addition to our staff here, and we're just so blessed to have him. And, and so, many of, so many of you, uh, like yesterday at the, at the service, after the luncheon, after the funeral service, you know, there were, I don't know, maybe eight uh, ladies over in the gym and just everything was running smoothly and I poked my head in because I, I'm one of the, I, don't, I don't like to just stand and watch things. I, so I poked my head in and realized I was just making confusion. So I'm just backing out and things run smooth. And, and all, all, of the, all of those ladies were volunteers. None of them got paid. They just did it because they love people and they want people to know that they are loved by God. And that's what our service does for people, right? It, it reminds them that God loves them. We love because he first loved us. That's what 1 John tells us in chapter 4. We love because he first loved us. And when we serve people, when we uh, come alongside of people in need and, and uh, help out with various ministries or things, or, or we just do something individual, like so many of you with the meals, you know, we put the meal, the perfect potluck things out and you take meals to people. And I, I don't even know who's taking meals. I don't even know 
uh, how many meals oftentimes are being taken, and yet people are being loved on and cared for because you are serving God with the gifts that he has given to you and the resources that he's blessed you with. And so I want to say thank you to you. I want to say thank you. Keep up this, this great work of mission because it's what we are called to do. It's who we are called to be. Last week we talked about the why of mission and that it's the love of Christ, right? The love of God compels me, Paul said. The love of God compels me to share the gospel, compels me to be on mission for Christ. And this morning I want to talk just a little bit more about what mission. And so we're going to turn to that classic text in Matthew chapter 28. Verses 16 through 20, Jesus' last words to the disciples uh, as recorded in the book of Matthew. It's post-resurrection. The disciples are, are, uh, have been meeting with Jesus after the resurrection, and, and now he gathers with them here, Matthew chapter 28, beginning with verse 16. I'm in the New Living Translation. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always even to the end of the age. Let's pray. God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for your power that you release into our lives. And Lord, as we think more about what you are doing here, I pray that you would move in our hearts, that you would move in our lives, that you would move in this church, releasing your power. The disciples would be made. They would be taught and they would go and make new disciples who would be taught and go and make new disciples and that we would see this ripple effect of your kingdom moving forward, advancing forcefully against the enemy, taking ground in your name. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Now every church that has a mission statement, their mission statement comes out of Matthew 28. Uh, the Great Commission. Jesus gives us two commands, right? He gives us the Great Commandment, which is love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. We have the Great Commandments of Jesus. And then we have the Great Commission, go and make disciples. These two statements of Jesus summarize his entire ministry. Love God, love others, be on mission for God in making disciples. The Wesleyan Church has taken these two statements, and they used to say fulfilling the, the, the purpose of the Wesleyan Church was to fulfill the Great command, Commission in the spirit of the Great Commandment. And that, that's still the ethos under which uh, we, we live in, and breathe and work. And, and yet they've rephrased that in, in a little bit more contemporary language, and they've, they've stated that this way now, that, that we are celebrating every time a disciple makes a disciple and a church replicates itself or a, plant, a new church plant happens until there is a faithful presence, a faithful Wesleyan presence in every zip code. That, so that's, that's what they're talking about. They're celebrating every time a disciple makes a disciple and the church uh, replicates itself. Another church is born out of the work of a church until there's a faithful presence of the kingdom of God in every zip code. And we're, as Wesleyans, we're, we're, we're talking about a faithful uh, Wesleyan presence, that we would have a faithful presence. Now, does that mean that we're going to plant a church in every zip code in America? No. That would not be wise, in fact. But it does mean that we are looking to think, how can we have a faithful presence? How could we have a small group, a connect group that meets in every zip code? How could we have a ministry from every church that is touching every zip code. And so as we think about that locally, we're thinking about the zip codes that surround us. How could we as Orchard Park help the Wesleyan Church achieve this? How can we make an impact in the various zip codes that surround Orchard Park Wesleyan Church? 
And how can we have a faithful presence in those zip codes? We have a lot of faithful people and a lot of you are doing great things and so we already do have a faithful presence in many of those. What zip codes could we do even more in? Where do we need to expand our ministry? Where do we need to make sure that we are sharing that extraordinary life with Jesus Christ? Right, like we talk about seeking and sharing, seeking that disciple uh, process, disciple making process that we all are on a journey. We all are on a journey of faith where we are growing closer to God. You know, I've been married for 18 years now. <laughs> I had to think about that, Jim, yes. And I shouldn't have to because it's whatever year we're in, that's how many years, because we got married December 21st, 1999. So uh, whatever year we're in, that's how many years I've been married. I, I, that was the best decision ever to get married so I could remember that. Um, and and, and I, I can think back to when I, when I got married. I thought I loved Karen then. Man, I didn't love her at all compared to what I do now. I mean, because I've, I've seen 18 years of just love coming back at me in such a beautiful way, and I'm, I'm not the easiest person to live with sometimes. Like, you know I'm not always the easiest person to work with. Imagine living with me. But, but as I've gotten to know Karen, and as we've grown in our love for one another, our love just gets richer. My grandfather used to tell me that it got sweeter as the years go by. Is your love with Jesus that way? Are you seeking after him? Are you still seeking? Or if you like, man, I've gotten so close to Jesus, I think I'm just going to coast spiritually. I I'm in a good place with Jesus, so I can just kind of lay back and relax. You do that in your marriage and call me in 10 years and tell me how it's working out. Right? You do that with Jesus, call me in two years because it's not gonna be working out. We are seeking, seeking extraordinary life with Jesus. We have to keep on seeking, church. We have to keep on pursuing God's love. We have to keep on pursuing Jesus Christ, growing in him and experiencing his love. We gotta keep seeking, growing in relationship. But we also are sharing, right? Like we're taking the love of Jesus to everyone we meet. We're taking his love out. We're, because when you have something that is so good, like it just, you can't hold it inside. Like you gotta talk about it. You gotta tell people about it. it it's too good to keep to yourself. It's like that story that Pastor Luis used of the, the lepers that, that found the food outside the city and the city was starving. And they're like, we can't keep this to ourselves. We gotta take it back into the, the people that need it. We are sharing, we are taking the love of Christ. And so, what does that look like this year? What does is, what is our mission look like as we head into the 2018-2019 church year? Well, a few, last year at this time, I drew this picture, um, and my drawing has not improved any. So, Put up, but we, we had this kind of picture of a mountain, a mountain range with two peaks in the distance, and we talked about planting a church in the city and, and doing another uh, church plant of, of being a sending church, and we weren't sure how that was actually going to manifest itself uh, locally, whether it's a, a satellite campus somewhere or what that looks like. And, but uh, we thought that we would be doing something more locally first, and, and yet God changed the timeline on us and and Resurgence City is one of those mountain peaks. And, and so we're, we're working with the core team from Resurgence City to climb that mountain and to see that church become a reality. And they need your prayers. They need your continued prayers and support. Like it takes a long time to develop a strong church in the city. It doesn't just happen overnight. It's, it's complicated. It's, it's hard work. There's a lot of people who are resistant to the church coming in, even some churches that are resistant to a church coming in and establishing itself within the, the city of Buffalo. There are racial tensions. We are a white suburban church and we're, you know, there are, there are people that look at us and say, what are you trying to do? Come in and fix us in the city? You know, trying to take over 
our area in the city. Like there, these are real tensions that we're facing that Elijah on the front line and his core team are facing. They need our prayers. We need to continue to support them. It's going to be a long journey. It's not going to, you know, and, and you know, next year we're not going to look back and say, all right, I don't anticipate anyways. We'll look back and say, oh, look at that. We've got a church of 100 people there in the city that's just thriving because it doesn't happen that way most of the time. It's a journey. It's a process. And so we're, we're, you know, we're not at the top of that mountain. We are, that team is climbing the mountain, and we are their supply line. And so our prayers and our, our energy and our, our encouragement, you know, our, our support financially is going to continue to help to keep that team moving forward up that mountain peak of Resurgent City. And so I encourage you, keep praying, keep encouraging, keep pouring into uh, Elijah through uh, Facebook encouragement, through a card, through your prayers, through conversation when he's here. Uh, make sure that we hold them up in faith and also with tangible support. So that was one of the mountains. The other, the other mountain, we're not sure. We're still just kind of waiting to see what God would have that other one be. And we're going to keep being faithful. And there are some things that, at, that we know we, we need to continue to work on and continue to develop here as we prepare for whatever that other peak is that God has for us, whatever that looks like. And we're not trying to define that right now because it would be too early to do that. It would be unwise for us to say, all right, that's what that peak is right now. Because there are other things that are more immediate that we need to be focusing in on. And so this year, in particular, I want us to, to focus on a couple of particular things. One is I want us to be thinking about how can we uh, make a, a spiritual impact and a, and a uh, have a, a presence, an increased presence here in Orchard Park, right? Like, what can we do here particularly in Orchard Park to engage the people of Orchard Park with the gospel? How can we love on Orchard Park so that Orchard Park knows that God loves them? Now, I know that some of you don't live in Orchard Park. Some of you live in Hamburg or Eden or uh, Holland or other places, uh, and, and yet, this is where God has placed us geographically as a church, right? We are the Orchard Park Wesleyan Church, or the Wesleyan Church of Orchard Park. This is where God physically has planted us. And so we have a responsibility to this community. The, like, Orchard Park is our Jerusalem. It's our first point of contact with the world. And so how can we make a, a, an in, have an increased impact here in Orchard Park. That is one thing that I want us to focus on this year. And so there are several things. If you picked up one of the packets, I talk about this more extensively in the packet, various uh, potential opportunities. None of these are nailed down. They're just things that I'm thinking about. And I want you to be praying, how can we do this? You may have some ideas. You may have some opportunities that you're aware of that we're not. I would love to hear about those opportunities, especially the ones that you would be willing to step into in leadership. To say, I'm not going to just tell you about this, I'm going to help make it happen. Right? Like Those are the ideas that the church can really get behind. Ideas where you say, well, this would be great for somebody else to do. Eh, we may feel the same way. <laughs> it would be great for somebody else to do. But when someone comes and says, you know what, I have a passion, God's put this on my heart, I'd love to be part of this. We can get behind that. And we can say, all right, how do we make this happen? How do we, how do we support that? How do we have an impact? So that's one of the areas that I want us to be focusing on. How do we make an impact here in Orchard Park? Identifying particular issues and people groups that we can come alongside of. And, you know, there's lots of different ways that we can do this. It's going to take some resources. It's going to take some volunteer hours. It's going to take some commitment from us as a church. But I want to see us be a church that if we disappeared from the map, the people down in the village of Orchard Park would say, what happened to that church? Because they were a they were a powerful force for good in our community. Right, like if we did not exist, would the town of Orchard Park care? If they would not care, there's something wrong with what we're doing. Not with them. That's on us. And so I want us to think about how can we be, make such an impact in this place where God has planted us specifically that if we disappeared off the face of the map, they would, they would mourn. They would weep because we made such an impact in their lives. 
I, I encourage you to pray with me, think about that with ideas to bring forward those ways that God lays on your heart that we could make an impact. That's one of our foci for this year. We're going to continue. I want to encourage us to continue to uh, uh, pray and specifically to pray. I lost my notes here. Hold on. Specifically to pray for people that you are in everyday contact with or weekly contact with who do not yet know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so, in church terms, we call this personal evangelism. Who, who, are the, who, who is the one person? No more than three. I want you to think of one to three people that you know, that you see every week. Right? Not somebody you see once a year, but somebody you see on a regular basis. They're part of your, your weekly routine. Is not yet a follower of Jesus Christ. And would you specifically make that person a matter of daily prayer in your life? On June, the first Sunday in June, I'm going to be on vacation next week, uh, but the first Sunday in June, we're going to be talking, uh, we're going to be putting some physical ways for us to remember. We're going to have a jar up here that we're going to be asking you to write that person's name on, and we're going to put their, their, those names in the jar. And then I'm going to be talking about a prayer challenge in just a few moments that we're going to physically represent with some of those glass stones. And we're going to cover those uh, pieces of paper with our glass stones as we pray for them. It's symbolically reminding us that we are praying for people who are not yet followers of Jesus Christ to become followers of Jesus Christ. Jesus told us our mission was to go and make disciples. That's Jesus' command to us. Who are the people that God has put in your life that you are the best person to reach them for Jesus. You're the person that's going to help, that's going to make that disciple. You're going to be a disciple maker. And these are the people that God's laid on your heart. I'm asking you over the next week and a half, next two weeks, to pray, who is it, God, that you want me to specifically pray for and then to look for opportunities to share God's love with them, to love on them in the name of Jesus to help them to take a step closer to Jesus. And maybe, uh, we're, and, and we're, gonna, we're gonna spend a couple Sundays uh, at the end of June and July talking about how we can do that. I've, I'm gonna be asking some people in the congregation who uh, have been sharing some things with me about how God's been working in their lives to do this, and they're gonna be sharing with us uh, on, on those Sundays. So don't miss the last part of June. Don't miss any Sunday, but uh, the last part of June and July, we're gonna be talking specifically, here are some resources, here are some ways that we can do this, uh, new ideas and maybe old ideas that just need to be uh, freshened up on how we can live into people's lives with the love of God. But would you be praying for that person? And would you put their name on a piece of paper that first Sunday in June when we come together so that we can pray with you every week for those people that they would be drawn to Jesus Christ. Jesus says, unless I draw them, no one can come to the Father. So we're going to be praying that God would be doing his part, that he would be drawing people. But you know what? God asks, has a part for us too. And that is to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to be the mouthpiece of Jesus many times, to be the one that explains God's love, explains how we enter into relationship, and that physically shows the love of Christ to that person or group of people. We all have a responsibility in this area. Either we're all missionaries or no one's a missionary, right? We're all on mission. No one's exempt from the Great Commission. And so I'm asking you to, to identify those people here in the next couple of weeks. Come prepared to write their name on that piece of paper so we can pray with you and you're going to commit to pray and then look for opportunities to lead that person to Jesus. And so I talked about this prayer challenge. I, I want to challenge us to 1,000 hours of prayer this summer. 1,000 hours of collective prayer. So how do we get there? You might pray, there's 12 weeks in the summer, right? You want to pray for an hour a day, that's 90 hours of prayer. You may want to pray an hour a week, that's 12 hours. You could pray five minutes a week, that's an hour, right? Like that's less than a minute a day. Everybody can pray that much, right? Like you can, you pray over your meals, you pray more than a minute a day. All of us could pray for at least five minutes a week, 
That's one hour of prayer, specifically for people to come to know Jesus, the people that we're praying for. We probably all could spend more like five minutes a day at least, right? That's seven and a half hours through the summer that you would be praying for that particular person or group of people. There are two things I want us to be praying for. One is the, the people that God has laid on our hearts that we would be sharing his love with. The second thing I want you to be praying for is how God would have us to reach Orchard Park with his love. That those ideas and opportunities that God already knows about, that he's already put people into motion with, opportunities that he's already got lined up, we just have to see them and then have the faith to step into them. But that he would reveal them to us and bring them to our awareness and give us faith to step into them. Give us unity around them. So I'm asking you to pray for that and to pray for those people that you're passionate about and that others are passionate about sharing the gospel with. 1,000 hours. I think we can actually blow this out of the water over three months, June, July, and August, that together. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have these glass beads and as you pray, every week, we're going to be encouraging you. If you've prayed uh, this week, would you come up and each bead's going to represent one hour. And we're going to have a thousand of these glass beads. And we're just going to watch this cylinder just fill up as, as a representation. I'm not trying to guilt anybody or anything like that. We're not going to keep track of who's praying and who's not praying. We just want to have a visual representation that you're not praying alone and that people are being covered with prayer. That this church is being saturated with the, with the prayers of God's people as we see those, those glass beads just kind of fill up that tube. It's going to be an encouragement to us to know that hey, the person that I put their name in that basket or in that tube, somebody else is praying for them too. You're not alone on this journey, right? Like that's one of the things we talked about this last year is that we want to have a church that is related deeply uh, in fellowship, deeply in relationship with one another, that lives and works in unity and in love for each other. And one way we do that is we pray for one another and we pray for the things that other people are praying about. And I hope that you're encouraged as you see that your prayers are being covered with prayers of other people too. And God hears those prayers and he will answer. And so as we think about uh, engaging in mission, I'm asking you to think about who is it that God's calling you to witness to, particularly this summer. What are those opportunities? Will we pray about that? Will we pray also about how we can, as a community, reach into Orchard Park in such a powerful way with the love of Christ that Orchard Park knows that God loves them because we love them. That there'd be no doubt that God is here and that God is at work and the disciples are being made. You know, we do this in some ways already. We have opportunity, some natural opportunities to engage with families who already frequent our campus. VBS is coming up in July. We have families uh, from our community that come here for VBS. Some of them come from other churches. That's great. But there are, you know, the families I'm, I'm most concerned about are families that bring their kids that don't go to any church, that don't have a church family. We can engage with those families. They're already here. Like there's a natural opportunity for us. But we can't just leave it to the people that volunteer for VBS to do that. We all need to figure out how can I stop in? How can I connect with that family? How can I be part of that ministry so that there's a connection point for me with that person who needs a church family? We have weekly programs in the fall. Our Pioneer Girls and our CBS or CSB Boys programs. We have families. Uh, talk to Jill and, and, and Jim uh, Sadowski and, and, and Jill Norvalitis and they will tell you that half of those families have no church family. No church affiliation. But their, their kids are here. We need to become their church family. We can't leave it to the volunteers and say, well, that's our, that's our outreach program, CSB and Pioneer Girls. They're, they're doing outreach and that's great, uh, but we're here on Sunday morning and, and they're doing it during the week. No, we need to figure out how do those families become part of this church family? The ones who don't have any church family already. How do we love on them so much that they say, you know what? I can't not be with those people because I feel loved on. I feel God's presence. I feel his grace when I'm around them. That they would want to be here. 
that they would become part of our church family. Church, these are our opportunities that God has already put in front of us. And we need to step into them as a church, not just as, all right, you guys that are doing, you know, great job, Jim, great job, Jill, your volunteers, go do it. Like, we can't do that anymore. We've got to figure out how do we engage and how do we become part of these families in a meaningful way so that they know that God loves them. Because that's the mission. Go and make disciples. That's what Jesus told us to do. And that's, what we're, that's how we're describing it here this year in this place. Let's make an impact right here in our Jerusalem. We're going to continue to do, we've got a mission trip planned for next August. You know, we're going to continue to do regional stuff in the city of Buffalo and world stuff around the world. But we need to focus on our back door. We need to focus on the people that we see every week that don't know Jesus. We need to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We need to be on mission for Jesus. And so I'm asking you this year, would you be on mission with us? Would you join us in taking the love of Christ to everyone that we meet, sharing the extraordinary life of Jesus with people who don't know him? Would you be part of that? Would you join us in that? Would you pray about that? Would you bring those ideas, the, the, the ideas that you'll say, you know what, I'm not just going to give you an idea, I'll be part of that idea. I'll make it happen with you. Would you be willing to step out in faith? Would we be willing to become a church that makes an impact in our community and doesn't just gather as kind of the saints all alone? I pray that you would join me in that this year. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would release your power in our midst, that we would know your grace, that we would know the transforming presence of Christ as people come to faith, as lives are renewed, as relationships that were broken are restored, as people who have addictions and, and uh, physical illness are healed, Lord, as uh, families are brought back together, Lord, would you, would you renew and, and restore and begin here with us? Be, help us to, to not just be thinking uh, uh, that it's somebody else's job or it's some other place that we have to go, but right here in our very community, Lord, would you help us to make an impact for the gospel that you would go forth with power and your word would go forth with power and that lives would be transformed and people would be one for the kingdom and your kingdom would advance because your people are faithful to your mission. Empower us and encourage us to that end, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.